Howdy, Tommy from Technicians here. In this video, we're gonna be talking broadly about uh, reef tank ecology. So this is a series that we've been wanting to do for a while now, take a deep dive into this. I'm gonna link in the description a couple blog posts that we wrote a few years ago where we started talking about this. But we believe that uh, the ecology of our reef tanks is probably one of the more misunderstood and more important concepts in the reef keeping hobby, uh, especially one that's giving us a lot of trouble right now. And um, we kind of got motivated to start this with the Copapod video and in reading through the comments from that last video, uh, I realized that I probably should have started here. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about uh, how ecosystems form and what we know about that process and specifically the time factor that occurs with that and how that might be insurmountable. In future videos, we'll talk about uh, microbial methods and techniques to kind of show that there's only so much that we can know about this right now. And uh, we'll also be talking more broadly about diversity, you know, what it is and how it affects reef tank ecology. So without further ado, let's start the video. If you appreciate what we're doing here, please hit that like button. It helps us out so much. Thanks. Also, we got in a really nice Indo-Pacific fish shipment on Wednesday, so I'll be including uh, just some snippets of that to keep this video a little more interesting. I'm gonna start off by reading straight from the uh, blog post. So an ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. When you start a new aquarium, your job is to help these interactions form in a favorable way. When you're maintaining an aquarium, your job is the same, but sometimes made more challenging by your tiny ecosystem's increasing complexity. This series of blog posts will teach you five important ecological principles that apply to your aquarium. So in this video, we're gonna look at the first of those ecological principles. So a great place to start this series on ecological principles as they relate to our aquariums is to think about island formation. So if you can imagine an island forming in the Indo-Pacific, we have molten rock, magma coming out of the crust of the earth. It's a very tumultuous process. It breaks free of the surface and then it rapidly cools down. Uh, this environment is sterile. Right, that hot, hot rock is entirely inhospitable to life. Um, and this is a great way of thinking about our aquariums because if you're using modern reef keeping methodologies, your aquarium is going to be sterile when you first set it up. So things get to this island by being transported there across the ocean. So that's a selective pressure on what can get there. Only things that can survive the trip from the nearest landmass that has life on it to this brand new island. The first things that can live on these islands are often small organisms, uh, grasses, you know, maybe that can survive with very low nutrients and the low soil that's available. They can break it down and then start to create more soil. And then as there's more available nutrients for increasingly bigger and more diverse plant life, you start to get a community of different plants that can support a community of different animals and the biodiversity increases in that way. The same thing is what's gonna happen in our aquarium. When we're thinking about the concept of succession and that's where you know the first organism moves in, typically something ephemeral, it's the faster growing uh, organism as well. And then there's something that is hardier than that that can outcompete it for safe, for space, if it's able to establish itself, uh, this is called succession. And in a reef aquarium, oftentimes what we see with succession is when you first set up the tank and then you turn the lights on, you get these ugly brown algaes. And those ugly brown algaes might then work their way, uh, you know, to some cyano or to some hair algae or, you know, something like that, something that we've introduced, some other forms of algae. And then eventually when the tank is mature and you have a healthy biodiverse uh, microbial ecosystem, uh, subsisting on the rocks and the sands and the walls of your aquarium, you no longer are dealing with these algaes as much. So that's the end goal. So this process of succession that's occurring on this hypothetical island that we're thinking of is necessary to the formation of this ecosystem. You can imagine that if an iguana washed up onto this island before any of the plant communities had established themselves, it would starve to death. And even in a more nuanced way, you could probably imagine that, uh, you know, say if uh, some kind of predator were established on the island, like a 
a bird that could eat a lizard and a small anole made it to the island before there was enough habitat for the anoles to hide from these birds, they also wouldn't make it because they would get eaten pretty quickly. Um, and so we have to keep this in mind when we're talking about the maturation process of our reef aquariums. It's a process that takes time to develop that ecology. Not only is this a process that takes time, but you also end up with a wholly unique ecosystem in your reef aquarium more than likely, because if we just use the analogy of the island again, uh, that island's ecology is going to be very different from the mainland that supplied all of the animals and plants that made it to the island because there's a bunch of things that are left out and also they were added in a different order at different times and so some things were able to establish themselves in say the absence of a predator and then once that predator goes to the island they might need to uh, or they might develop different behaviors or different different strategies that help them to avoid that predator. Um, and there's a lot of examples of this in ecology. There's a really great one in, I think, the last blog post, if you want to check that out in the, in the description when you're done with this video. Um, but because these ecosystems are so unique, um, and because microbial diversity is so staggeringly large, it's hard to imagine that we can get to a point in this hobby where you could add a bottle of some microbes that would you know, skip the maturation cycle. And I imagine that if we're looking at the assemblages of microbes that are in our aquariums at a very broad level with the tools that we have available to us now, that that's not giving us a really good window into the actual functions of these organisms in our aquarium. And given that we have, you know, pretty advanced styles of filtration now, and there's a bunch of macroorganisms in the aquarium that are, uh, you know, eating the biofilms and even helping to filter the water, uh, it's so complex that it's going to be very, very hard to actually get concrete answers on this. And this is why we're using these analogies in this series. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. We have a few more videos on this topic coming out soon. And here's a nature clip.